R.E.M. is one of the most important and influential alternative rock bands from the early days of alt-rock. But in their earliest days, their sound was very different. A peculiar series of events took place that would ultimately lead to the band's defining sound. This is the unexpected story of how Peter Buck landed his beloved Rickenbacker 360. And it involves a beautiful woman in a see-through shirt and a horrendously failed attempt at flirting. Early R.E.M. R.E.M. takes their name from the abbreviation of Rapid Eye Movement, which was chosen by frontman Michael Stipe by randomly picking the name from the dictionary. You've probably heard of R.E.M. Sleep or REM Sleep. Well, that's where that comes from. The band formed in Athens, Georgia in 1980. The original lineup consisted of Michael Stipe on vocals, Peter Buck on guitar, Mike Mills on bass, and Bill Berry on drums. Their formation was a serendipitous meeting of creative minds. Stipe met Buck in Buck Street Records, a local record store where Buck worked, and they soon connected with Mike Mills and Barry, who were friends and had played together in various bands. The band's first performance was on April 5, 1980, at a friend's birthday party held in an abandoned church. This initial gig marked the beginning of their journey, leading to a series of local performances that helped build their reputation. R.E.M. quickly gained a local following with their unique sound, influenced by punk rock, post-punk, and 1960s pop. Their first single, Radio Free Europe, was released in 1981 on the independent label Hibtone, receiving a bit of critical acclaim. Their first EP, Chronic Town, which I've got right here, was released in 1982 on IRS Records, and it further established their reputation, showcasing their jangly guitar sound and enigmatic lyrics. The Athens music scene, which included bands like the B-52s and Pylon, provided a nurturing environment for R.E.M.'s growth, contributing to their grassroots success. The Breaking of the Guitar during one of R.E.M.'s early performances, the band was playing in a low-ceiling tent. It was a small crowd well before they'd started making waves in alt-rock. This was back when they were still a bit of a frat rock band in the local college scene. Athens is a college town. Makes sense. As the story goes, as they're about to play, or while they're playing, up comes this gorgeous woman. I mean, beautiful. Right to the front of the stage. Right in front of Peter Buck. She catches Buck's eye, and, I mean, how could she not? She was wearing a bit of a see-through shirt. And she seemed to be flirting with Buck at that. And this is where things get... tricky. In an attempt to impress her, Buck decided to add some rock star flair to his performance. Channeling the energy of rock icons, Buck began doing jumps and kicks, letting the moment and the attention drive his actions. However, the tent's low ceiling proved to be a bit of an obstacle. On one particularly enthusiastic jump, Buck's head collided with one of the metal support beams, and simultaneously the neck of his guitar smashed into it as well, breaking the instrument. After the show, with almost no money to his name, and in need of a guitar rather quickly as they had a number of other shows booked, Peter went down to the local guitar shop. Where else are you going to find a super cheap guitar? And last minute at that. Remember, this is the early 80s, long before the internet. The Rickenbacker. Buck was desperate, with only about $200 to his name, and in need of a new guitar, stat. The only thing that they had in this price range was a Rickenbacker 360. At the time, Rickenbackers were not cool. Not at all, especially with the emerging alt-rock scene. Rickenbackers were for stodgy country and folk artists, people like Tom Petty, which, I mean, maybe a little cool, but not college cool. There was nothing else in his budget, so despite this, out of desperation, Buck bought it. It was a necessity, and he was completely unaware of the profound impact it would have on R.E.M.'s sound and legacy. The Rickenbacker 360 is known for its jangly and bright tone, and it became Peter Buck's signature instrument. Buck started experimenting a little bit with finger picking, and he quickly found that despite the lack of cool factor, the sounds he was able to get from this guitar were 
actually quite cool. And this is how the Rickenbacker not only became Buck's guitar of choice, but would go on to significantly influence R.E.M.'s music and alt-rock in general, helping to shape the band's early alt-rock and jangle pop sounds, something you can hear definitively on Chronic Town. This distinctive tone of the Rickenbacker 360, combined with Buck's playing style, set R.E.M. apart from their contemporaries and drew comparisons to the Birds and other 60s bands, yet their style also drew in more modern sounds as well that were influenced by punk and post-punk, all of that into this new alt-rock thing that was happening. The guitar's unique look and sound are now closely associated with R.E.M.'s early albums, such as Murmur and Reckoning and once again, Chronic Town. Buck's use of the Rickenbacker has inspired countless other guitarists and bands, leaving a truly lasting impact on alternative and indie rock alike. And that, my friends, is how Peter Buck's failed attempt at flirting with a beautiful woman during a show in a see-through shirt ultimately led to the band achieving the defining sound in the 1980s, a sound that followed them across multiple decades. These events paved the way for R.E.M.'s success and contributed to their rise as one of the most important bands in early alt-rock history. If you want to hear other stories like this about bands and their journey to success, you can check out some of these videos over here. And stay tuned for new album stories every single week right here on the Fence Post Vinyl channel. As one person said many years ago, this dude is a damn nerd. I'm Andy, this is the Fence Post Vinyl channel. I'll see you in one of these videos over here.